morning and welcome dear friends. In the previous module, we had looked at the technological developments that had led to the socialization of the web. We had analyzed it in the context of different channels of communication like wikis, blogs and podcasts etc. Today we shall focus on the central role of artificial intelligence as part of communication technologies. As we all know, today artificial intelligence has come a long way from merely reproducing aspects of human intelligence to a point where AI technologies can actually function as communicative subjects rather than interactive objects. Individuals routinely chat with Amazon's Alexa, Apple, Siri and other similar digital assistants. In the later modules, we will also discuss the communication models used for training them during our discussions on gender, race and artificial intelligence. The gulf between human and machine communication now has been blurred. Let us see how AI has developed over the years, particularly in the field of communication, what are the important issues and breakthroughs related with this area. It was in the 1950s that the British scientist Alan Turing had proposed the famous imitation game in which he had attempted to answer the question, can a machine think? The test involves an interrogator who communicates with a human being and also with a machine with the help of a text-based interface without knowing which is which. If the evaluator cannot consistently distinguish between the human being and the machine, then the machine is said to have passed the Turing test and demonstrated human-like intelligence. Shortly after this, Marvin Minsky and Dean Edmonds built what could be described as the first AI computer. The possibility that machines can act as intelligently as a human does is referred to as weak AI. In my NPTEL SWAM course on contextualizing gender, I have discussed the concept of Alan Turing in detail. In fact, in 1950, Turing had said that in about 50 years, an average interrogator will not have 70% chance of making the right identification between a machine and a human. This immediately provoked a defensive attitude in some people to conclude that no matter what machines are capable of, humans would always have an edge, they would have always something more. The Turing test did not deal with issues related with consciousness or self-awareness. But since its inception, it has become a cornerstone argument in the philosophy of AI. It laid the foundations for what is known as the Chinese room problem. So what exactly is the Chinese room problem? This is a thought experiment and a philosophical argument which was proposed in 1980 by John Surley. This argument imagines a person who does not understand the Chinese language at all, but can generate grammatically correct responses using a rule book. It is very similar to how a computer program operates. Surley had argued that this shows that even the most advanced computers lack true understanding or consciousness as they simply follow pre-programmed rules. Surly was refuting the idea of a strong idea, that is, the possibility that a machine can simulate human thinking. However, the concept of technological singularity put forward by science fiction author Bernard Vinge described the potential of machine intelligence to surpass human intelligence. According to Vinge, technological singularity will revolutionize all previous structures of human life and will instigate enormous changes within a very short period of time. Werner Vinge was the first author 
or a critic to present the idea of a fictional cyberspace. His novels which became very famous are True Names, The Peace War and ultimately A Fire Upon the Deep which were published during 1980s and early 1990s. He propounded the possibility that AI and machines will one day be capable of self-improvement and would also be able to seed a generation of computers which are far superior to the human intelligence. We look at this concept frequently in fiction and movies. Also, several scientific researchers are moving in this direction where chips can be a part of human body for several purposes. This idea has been foreshadowed by technological singularity. Humans will transcend their biological nature and will be in a coexistence with machines. So, what is the concept of technological singularity? It is a hypothetical future event in which artificial intelligence will have surpassed human intelligence, leading to a rapid and exponential increase in technological development. Once we create a machine with the ability to improve its own intelligence, it could undergo a self-reinforcing cycle of improvement leading to ever increasing intelligence at an exponential rate and this is termed as intelligence explosion. The speculated ways to augment human intelligence include genetic engineering, AI assistance, direct brain computer interfaces and mind uploading. The clip that we saw is from the 2014 movie Automata directed by Gabe Ibanez. The movie shows technological singularity by building robots which have been designed to rebuild the world even in a highly hostile environment. It pushes the boundaries of the rights as well as of responsibilities as far as human beings are concerned and also I would say for machines. 1980s saw a revival in AI due to the development of expert systems designed to deal with specific domains of knowledge as well as the parallel development of robotics. The advent of wireless made networked computers and distributed intelligence a reality. Ongoing research aims at realizing the embodiment of AI system either as a real version of the world or a virtual one or even a simulated world. New sensory inputs and new means of communication for humans have sprung up. This means that the age of cyborg that is part human or animal and part machine has commenced. Indications are there in digital ways of communication. A cyborg or a cybernetic organism has integral technology implanted within them which is linked to a computer. Modern AI is part of rational AI which means that it can act intelligently and can think in its own right. Certain examples may be cited in this context for example ANN or artificial neural networks that simulate the function of biological neurons etc. Artificial life in the form of physical robots genetic algorithms that can describe a person's unique genetic makeup. The picture on the right hand side shows a prototype of primo post human. This is a prototype future body which has been created by the strategic designer Natasha Vittamor. It shows a completely robotic body with nano engineered spinal communication system that works under the guidance of networked AI. It is a cyborg body whose consciousness lives inside a robot. Vita Moore is a transhumanist who actually upheld the view that through future technologies, humans can transcend their current physical and cognitive limitations. The following video is an excerpt from a podcast episode of The Futures, where the transhumanists Natasha Vitamore and Max Moore 
talk about how we can leverage advanced technology for human enhancement. The philosophical concept of morphological freedom and also about body prosthetics. What the possibilities of morph morphological freedom could actually look like. Yes, and, and the way I, I saw it, that was in 1996, so it seems like eons ago. I don't even uh, I don't even do any artistic endeavors. Maybe my life has become my art. I don't know. But with primal posthuman, the idea was to design a whole body prosthetic as a prototype for the future, uh, designed with the emerging and speculative technologies and and um, ponderings of science in reversing and mitigating aging, et cetera. But using nanomedicine, before the term nanomedicine was even you know, brought up, outside of Robert Friedis, who wrote the book Nanomedicine, and um, a lot of the ideas of maybe that CRISPR has now <clears throat> with genetic engineering. But it wasn't on, only that, it was about encryption, because in the early 1990s, uh, we talked about on the Extra B Transhumanist email list, it was the first email list on the internet, on the future, and that was really exciting. Encryption was something important. And so Bitcoin was discussed or cryptocurrency, um, taking a look at maybe blockchain. All these ideas originated from the, the purveyors of that knowledge who have uh, since been the, um, the early adapters and entrepreneurs. But the idea of Prima Post Human was that we could have an alternative body that we could be interchangeable with biology. It wouldn't have to be exclusively um, technological. It could be semi-technological, semi-biological. But I wanted to bring up a point about morphological freedom that I think is, is essential. Um, Max explained it um, very, very clearly. And by the way, we should hook up. There's actually a chapter on that, I think, yeah. in, in the <laughs> Transhumanist <laughs> Reader. Yeah. Which will come yes. today at Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, one thing that's very important for everyone to know, and, and here is where I think that the news coverage since the 1980s and covering transhumanism through the 1990s has gotten it a little bit wrong. Morphological freedom means that while you may have the right to your body, uh, and to morph as you choose, a person also equally has a right never to be coerced to enhance. And that's very important because the, the, the idea that maybe transhumans think that we should be perfect, whatever perfection is. I have no interest in perfection. I think it's, it's a, a wasted space because once you've reached perfection, there's no place else to go. But the, the idea that um, there'll be the haves and the have-nots, the elitists, those who have morphological freedom or have the money to do it and everyone else will be an other, someone who's disregarded, is a ridiculous notion. And I think that's very obvious through the, the world we live in, the monetary economic system we live in. And I think Max could explain, it's not just capitalism, but competition competition and within products and the marketplace drives the price down so that just about everyone today has a smartphone. But early on, oh, oh, only the elite, the rich will have smartphones. Vita Moore here explains the idea of the primo post human as a prototype for the future designed as a whole body prosthetic. It talks about the whole concept of having an alternative body that could be exclusively technological or semi-biological. It is thought that the capitalist economy will invest in the concept of morphological freedom because AI will drive the society towards the idea of perfection. Now that we know the history of AI and its present day embodiment, let us look at the different perspectives through which we can analyze artificial intelligence related with digital communication. It can be either a technology-centric view or a human-centric view or a perspective which can be termed as collective intelligence. The technology-centric perspective suggests that humans are biologically constrained and therefore true intelligence can only be found in fully developed AI systems. Human-centric perspectives is just the opposite. It thinks that AI will never develop essential qualities like empathy or moral reasoning and that true intelligence can be found only in humans. Collective intelligence perspectives holds that true intelligence can only be found in the collective of human and AI entities. 
For example, in the debate on climate change, followers of technocentrism are in favor of technological solutions such as electrical cars and they are dismissive of behavioral solutions. Human centered researches refute the claim that AI is free of human bias and capable of perfect reasoning. We will analyze this aspect later in this module. Collective intelligence has also yielded novel applications such as crowdsourcing to build software encyclopedias like Wikipedia and digital maps. Keeping this in mind, let us look at how communication has evolved through these developments and manifestations of AI in the field of digital communication in the current society. Nowadays, we find that virtual assistants and voice activated control systems make use of chatbots, suggesting that human computer interaction is moving to a conversation interface and to a post app network where AI agents have replaced several physical applications. Stock trading agents and fintech people make use of AI for detection of economic fraud and for tapping prospective customers for various purposes. Physical AI applications can be seen in the domain of embodied intelligence like robots, drones, etc. And AI development is also found in logistics to optimize human resources such as healthcare and we can cite the example of DeepMind and HireVue. Other examples may include social media which is now an integral part of digital communication footprint and the use of AI in games which will be taken in detail in the coming modules. Looking from a human centric perspective, it is important to understand that the use of AI has ethical implications too. As over reliance on it has put people under the threat of constant surveillance. Some consider it as a digital panoptic society owing to constantly present electronic footprints. Let us take a case study of the failure of Microsoft's chatbot day that reveals the limits of AI agents in communication. The AI chatbot Tay was developed by Microsoft to conduct research on conversational understandings and natural language development. The platform was Twitter. However, we find that Tay became a remarkable example to understand that communication also involves cultural context as well as the nuanced meaning of words. AI systems feed off of both positive and negative interactions. If we look at the tweets which are seen in this slide, we can also understand the reason of the failure of Tay. Tay had a short and tragic life who within the space of 24 hours turned into a genocidal, racist, sexist and homophobic being. Tay failed as she was thrown into the deep end of the social media pool without the ethical and cultural capacities or contexts to swim at that end. Looking from a technology centric perspective, AI has been increasingly integrated into the gig economy platforms. A gig economy is a labor market that does not normally employ full-time workers and relies heavily on temporary and part-time positions. So gig market is flexible but with hardly any job security. And AI impacts the gig economy in several ways, leading to increased automation of tasks previously performed by human workers. Models of communication also change in gig markets. Platforms such as Uber and Lyft have already started to experiment with self-driving cars which could eventually replace human drivers altogether. As is apparent in this slide, we find that gig economy platforms are digital and service based on demand. However, the AI systems can also potentially lead to a reduced labor supply and loss of revenue for the workers 
as well as certain ends of their career perspectives. The following video shows the CEO of the gig economy platform Uber talking about the use of AI in its advancement. It supports the points we have already discussed. Pricing algorithms, uh, routing algorithms, when we decide to, let's say, batch a delivery order or not, um, even technologies such as recognition of, uh, of your license or your um, insurance uh, card, et cetera, um, all of these are AI driven and they have been a part of how we operate as a company. Uh, what you're seeing now is that as these, these models get more capable and larger, you can train them over much larger data sets. So we would have, let's say, an AI algorithm that is pricing for city by city by city. Now our AI algorithms can price globally and the efficacy in terms of pricing and matching is incredibly powerful. And because we have more data than anyone else, across a multitude of businesses, we think AI is going to be a very, very powerful tailwind for us. Virtual assistants like Alexa were also accused of invading privacy, recording conversations and sending it to random contacts. Now let us try to understand the key aspects of communicative AI technologies within HMC, that is human machine communication. We will be looking at three dimensions, functional, relational and metaphysical, as well as the implications of blurring the boundaries of what constitutes as human, machine and communication. We will try to understand this with the help of key ideas used in conventional communication and media theories. The functional aspect of AI has focused on creating AI technologies as communicators and ensuring that people are able to perceive them within this role. To discuss this idea further, I refer to the 2001 work of Manuel Kestel, The Internet Galaxy. Kestel has formulated the idea of networked individualism, noting that new technologies have led to me-centered networks where communication has become more personalized and privatized. We can cite the examples of Google News or Flipboards, etc., which use AI algorithms to personalize our feed. In an interpersonal communication, the message is exchanged and synchronized between the human and the AI technology, removing the human audience perhaps altogether. Technologies such as automated journalism like news writing programs are designed to fit into mass communication. In order to understand the relational aspects of AI, we need to understand that people's interactions are unfolded within social contexts and they understand AI in relation to these contexts only. This entails knowing about the social construction of technology or SCOT. SCOT is a theoretical framework which has been developed by Trevor Pinch and Weep Jaker in their work The Social Construction of Technological Systems published in 1987. It argues that technological artifacts such as AI systems can have multiple interpretations and meanings depending on the social positioning of technology in relation to themselves. The concept of network society was later developed by media theorists like Manuel Kestel and John Wenjik. It refers to the social structure and dynamics that have emerged in the contemporary era, characterized by the widespread use of information and communication technologies and the increasing importance of networks as well as our increased dependence on them. In the network society, intelligence is distributed across networks and it is not just the technology that defines modern societies but also the cultural, economic, social and political factors. 
As we know, emerging technologies of AI encapsulate the world views and biases of their creator. Technology's ability to communicate and also to be a communicator automates the communication process and it potentially erases the human that once stood in its spot and threatens social processes that hinge on human communication. The automation of communicative labor threatens to replace human effective labor with the mimicked creativity and care of machines. Jody Dean in her book, Democracy and Other Neoliberal Fantasies, published in 2009, talks about communicative capitalism that harnesses communication for economic and political control. Her central idea is that in the era of new liberalism, communication technologies have played a significant role in shaping political discourse as well as mobilization. Communicative AI is integrated into the domestic sphere as well. Introducing machine into the domestic sphere serves the purpose of increasing value in this sphere. This shows that there are social implications of representing the human within the machine, of automating the labor surrounding communication and of adopting these technologies within spaces that are often the most personal and meaningful. The study of AI is a challenge to existing conceptualizations of the nature of communication and also of humans. The interconnected networks of communication and information technology can transcend physical locations and shape our contemporary society. That is, we are entering into the next stage of evolution called the Internet of Intelligent Things where the embodiment of AI may or shall evoke communication networks and behaviors that eliminate human supervision. Internet of Things refers to a multitude of uniquely identifiable objects that are connected through the internet. It includes the role of social networks, sensor networks, as well as pervasive intelligent things like smart devices and robots. An AI approach of IoT refers to a network of interconnected but decentralized physical devices and objects that not only collect and exchange data but also have the ability to analyze and make intelligent decisions based on the collected data. Taking social networking to the IOIT enables connecting intelligent things to solve complex problems collaboratively. Different levels of services can be established between the things by determining their relationships with one another and similarly this also enables a seamless integration between the physical and the virtual worlds. Let us look at a few instances. Social Internet of Things consists of intelligent objects that publish themselves as services through online social networks and adapt the content to the users. The other aspect which we are discussing here is the cloud computing. Cloud computing involves the delivery of on-demand computing resources such as storage, processing power, software over the internet. For example, Urban Atmospheres by Intel aims at multi-sensorial networks and community information for the ease in future cities. One paradigm of cloud computing is cloud robotics, which is designed to evolve based on its acquired knowledge. Cloud robots are more portable, less expensive, and have access to better intelligence in comparison to an ordinary robot. And for this reason, their significance in the field of communication is also to be evaluated carefully. The paradigm of sense think act is considered as an operational definition of robotic communication. 
it outlines sensing the environment, processing the information and executing appropriate actions. Rodney Brooks, a well-known roboticist, has incorporated the design principle of subsumption architecture or behavior-based robotics. She aimed to organize a robot's behavior into a hierarchy of layers for specific behaviors or tasks. The layers are arranged in a way that lower level behaviors are subsumed by higher level behaviors, but they can still exert influence if necessary. Consciousness was relegated as an epiphenomenon. This later led to the invention of one of the early social robots, Kismet, to explore human robot interaction and social intelligence. We can look at a photograph of this robot in this slide. The photograph suggests that Kismet's features are specifically designed to encourage emotional responses from humans, and this became the beginning of attributing agency to robots and the emergence of social bots. Let us speculate on the sociality of social bots and their role in promoting opinions on media platforms which has come to be termed as deliberative democracy. I would refer to the concept of technological frame which is a socio-cognitive approach suggested by V. P. Jaker to study the convergence of communication and information technology. Mediating structure shaping the interactions within a social group regarding a technological artifact and in turn being shaped by these interactions and social bots are part of the technological artifact. Social bots are liminal social entities that are situated at the threshold between humans and non-humans. According to Latour, they are actors in the network of humans and non-humans who also have some agency and share the material production of reality with humans. They are part of post-cybernetic identity performance as they can act and pass as human online. Social boards are developing a distinctive machinic sociality. For example, Wikipedia has social boards for certain tasks such as combating vandalism, policing copyright violations, etc. Social bots also have negative influences as through the proliferation and deliberately designing and controlling our access to specific opinions only, they can easily sway the public sentiments. Social bots also negatively define the boundaries of human sociality online. For example, in December 2014, Instagram had deleted a number of accounts in the name of being fake and a number of critics termed it as Instagram rapture. The complex role of social robotics is entangled in the trajectories of power and politics, reminding us of what Lyotard had mentioned in his 1979 work, The Postmodern Condition, a report on knowledge. In his 1988 work, The Inhuman, Lyotard had again talked about the dominance of technology and visioning a world where knowledge to be understood as knowledge has to be translated first into data. Let us understand this further with the help of Habermas' ideal of public sphere and deliberative democracy. We will take up this idea further with the help of the theoretical stance of Habermas, particularly his ideal of public sphere and deliberative democracy in the next modules. From the standpoint of recent communication models, the machine has been theorized as having a degree of agency in that it performs a distinct role during interaction. AI has become a communicative subject and it is the subjectivity rather than interactivity that marks a significant technological transition. The role of technology, particularly of AI, is neither solely that of a communicator 
nor that of a medium that people use to control. Rather, it is both a communicator and a medium. And therefore, communication as we see is ultimately about the meaning that people derive in and through their interactions not only with people, but with people as well as machines. Culture, society and its power relations are always embodied within technology and enacted within its use. Technology, communication, self and society intersect in many ways and in turn shape relations with the world. In the context of digital communication, when we talk about the intersections with gender and race, it also brings us to the emerging concerns of communication capitalism and data colonialism. It makes the issues of ethical considerations in the latest intersection of communication and AI vital and urgent. We also cannot ignore developments like ChatGPT. In the next module, we shall address these concerns and discuss them in detail. Thank you.